had to shoot some stuff uh, yesterday, some content for uninterrupted yesterday. But I seen the, I seen the play. I seen the play. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, so last couple of days, what's been the focus for you guys? I know, and, and from what you've seen on film, it's a lot of this stuff fixable that's going on with you right now. No, absolutely. And uh, you know, we're just in a rough patch, and you know, hopefully we can you know get up out of it soon. You know, tonight is an opportunity for us to play some good basketball uh, versus the best team in, in, in the NBA right now. So, you know, we want to come out and play well. Uh, we want to defend. We want to try to make shots, obviously, uh, and just try to you know rewrite the ship. You know, especially after you know a, a tough road trip for us. I mentioned that you guys missed a bunch of shots on the road that you're accustomed to making. But is there something uh, about the offense that, that is well, it's just it's, it's implementing everybody back into the system once again. You know, um, you know, getting it into the flow. You know, Double T is finally starting to come around. You know, which we loved. He, he played you know, some really good basketball on the road trip. You know, getting our rotations back down. You know, we kind of had a, a thing going, and you know, um, you know, with everybody coming back, and you know, kind of, you know, took some guys out of rotation, put some guys in. We just all just trying to get another rhythm. You know, so, um, but you know, we got to play better basketball, and we can't allow us to miss shots to be. The deterrent of why we can't win ball games. Is it going to be games like that? You know, it happens throughout the course of the season. So, like I said, tonight is another opportunity. We have three games at home. You know, we have tonight, you know, we have Thursday versus Orlando, we have Saturday versus OKC. So, uh, you know, tonight is an opportunity for us to get better. When you're in a run like this and you have the Warriors, what is the specific opportunity or danger? Uh, like listen, there's no, it doesn't matter. I mean, you could be in a rut and, and be facing them. Uh, the team with the least amount of wins in the league, and you go out there and not play well, they'll beat you too. So it doesn't matter. Like I was asked the other day, what is the challenges that Golden State bring you, you know, the way that you're playing right now? And I said, listen, you can win 100 straight games in a row and play Golden State. The challenges does not change. That's just, I mean, they're as great as a team that you're going to face. So it, it doesn't change no matter what, no matter if you're playing well or you're not playing well when you face them. Christmas Day, they didn't have staff. You guys didn't have IT. Now, clearly, those two situations are a little bit different. Is it easier to read two more into tonight than you could on Christmas Day? No, because um, IT isn't um, where he will be you know, when playoff time hit. You know, and uh, you know, and obviously Steph has been playing exceptional basketball since he came back. He had the one little mishap, I believe, he hurt his ankle and shoot around, but he's been playing great basketball. So, I mean, it's going to take a little bit longer for us to get to where we need to be. Uh, we're not the team that we would like to be with postseason start. Um, playoffs can start tomorrow for them, and I think they'd be ready to go. For us, I don't think we're ready to go right now. Well, I mean, I think it's unbelievable what the NBA has done to be able to have this many games, a lot of great games today on such a great day um, for a man who stood um, for more than himself, who, you know, you always hear people t like risking their life. He actually gave up his life uh, for the betterment of all of us to be able to live in a free world and for us to be able to have a voice, to be able to, for us to go out and be free, no matter your skin color, no matter who you are, no matter the height and size and the weight or whatever the case may be, whoever you are, he, he had a vision and he um, took a bullet for all of us, literally. You know, and, and, and the, the rawest form that you can say that. He literally took a bullet for us. And, um, you know, for us to uh, stand here, even though um, we're trying to be divided right now by somebody, um, you know, today is a great day for to people to realize how America was built and how we all have to stand united in, in order to be um, at one, especially, you know, as Americans, because we believe, we all know, and we all believe this is the greatest country in the world. So. You know, special shout out to obviously MLK and you know and everybody who stands with him and, and obviously his family as well. Ron, you visited the museum, didn't you? Yep. So yep. What kind of impact did that have on you? Uh, it was a very eerie and powerful impact to be able to be there um, at that hotel, at that site where he was assassinated. It was a very eerie feeling uh, and a very powerful feeling at the same time to be able to grace uh, a part of the movement, be a part of the movement. You kind of felt that. So. I have, I'm looking forward to the opportunity where I can take my kids there and then com completely understand what they're, what they're um, actually witnessing. Have you ever thought about what, if you were still here today, what you would think of the efforts that you would, uh, your 
colleagues and all that you've gone through in terms of equality and whatnot? Um, well, I hope I can make him proud or made him proud. You know, um, you know just um, just taking what he was able to, you know, give to us and you know, give us that type of um, empowerment, give us that, that type of strength to be able to go out and, and talk about things that really matter, you know, and uh, be able to live for something that's more than you as an individual. Um, so hopefully I will be one of those guys that will make him proud. Hopefully I'm making him proud still with him looking down on us. That date on your shoe is the SB speech, right? Yep. What, I mean, clearly it, it's, it, it sticks out to you, it means a lot to you, but two years later, roughly, I mean, do you feel, well, I mean, has, any, has, that, has that moment changed for you at all? No, it hasn't changed. Um, the best thing that we wanted to do when we went up there was continue the conversation. We wanted to keep the conversation going. Two years later, the conversation is still going. You know, and we wanted it to, um, you know, at that point in time, knowing what was going on in America at that point in time and seeing the things that was going on, we wanted to enlighten our fellow athletes. It's the biggest night in the world for us. As athletes all come together, and we wanted to share, um, you know, our insight on what we felt was going on and what we felt like we could do to help. And, and the most important thing for us to try to continue the conversation about the state uh, of us as Americans and us as, you know, going forward. And, you know, obviously, um, and like I said before and just said that we are in a, in a difficult state right now as Americans as well with the um, leader of our, of our country. Um, but us, like I said, no matter, you know, the religion, no matter the shapes or sizes, we all have to continue to come together and shine, shine a, a brighter light on, on, you know, and, use the word stupidity, but that's what it basically comes down to. And, um, you know, because we've built uh, such an incredible uh, country and, and for us to be able to uh, live live free lives and be able to, you know, and work and, and, and work together, you know, no matter your color and skin tone and things of that nature and your religion. So, you know, we have to continue that. And that was that date um, two years ago. And I put it on my shoes because it always remind me of, um, of our conversation. The conversation and, um, will probably continue to keep um, you know, people involved and keep people, you know, starting from, you know, the, their communities all the way to other communities if they can um, and, and giving the, the youth an opportunity to, you know, be as, uh, as creative and, and, and as aware as they can be. In a way, does it bother you that it has been this long and we're still in that process trying to get that kind of footing? Well, I mean, the process will, it's not, it's not a, um, you know, it's not a sprint, so it doesn't bother me. It's not a sprint, this is a marathon and you know, the state of, of racism will never die. Um, but what we cannot do is allow it to conquer us um, as people. We can't allow it to divide us. Um, you know, the guy, like I said, the guy in control has given uh, people in racism, you know, in negative racism, an opportunity to be out and outspoken without, um, without fear, you know, and, uh, and that's the fearful thing for us. Um, because it's, it's with you and it's around every day, but you know, he's allowed people to come out and just feel confident about doing negative things. And um, you know, like I said, you know, we can't allow that to um, stop us from all you know, continuing to be together and, 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 and preach the right word of, you know, of living and loving and laughing and things of that nature. You know, because will we want to live anywhere else? I don't think so. We love this place. I appreciate it.